machen wir es auf Deutsch? Nein. Holländisch. <lacht> Let's make the, the playing field even. We'll do it in Dutch, okay? <lacht> so, today I am interviewing Bessel van der Kolk, one of the leading persons in the field of trauma therapy. His best selling book is translated in many languages. And I just was wondering, we both have been born around the end of the Second World War, how such traumatic happenings to the whole society have been influencing us all to go to such a field. And that would be my first question. Well, for me, certainly, what I learned experientially in the Second World War and its aftermath uh, was the defining question of my, of my life, my childhood. Uh, how can people do such unspeakable things to each other? And I grew up in a religious society, a religious family, where people preached love and goodness, and then you saw, saw this incredible cruelty happening all, all around yourself. You know, a large segment of my generation actually died at the last year of the war of hunger. Um, I didn't, but I barely survived. Uh, my father was in the camp. My uncle came back from the Japanese concentration camp. And my whole childhood is about the aftermath of unspeakable cruelty. So during this time, end of the war, many of the now modern techniques of trauma therapy have not been in the world. You could not treat such people somehow the way we are doing yeah. it now. You are well known for combining a lot of things. Can you explain what is your approach which you are describing in your new yeah. book? Well, actually, What is striking about trauma is how it gets discovered and forgotten. And so actually my first opening to learning about trauma was learning about Pierre Genet, who wrote about it in the 1870s, 1880s, and had a very rich therapeutic armamentarium. And then he got moved out of his institution in 1902. Then trauma therapy gets reinvented in his First World War stops again right after the war is over, again the Second World War. And by the time I worked with Vietnam veterans, there was no understanding about trauma whatsoever. But when we started to go to the library, we found that there was a lot of stuff before us. And so the interesting thing about trauma is that the people who suffer from it want to for forget it because it's too much. And society wants to forget it because it's too much also. And so this is not a popular subject. Just like traumatized people themselves are not popular people uh, because they remind us about how a rational society is and that rational solutions cannot always take care of things. So it, it stirs up a lot of issues always. Um, and so the, the first thing with, with trauma treatment is that people can tell the truth about what happened. And that's extremely difficult because people are filled with shame, uh, people get condemned for get me stuck in it. People say, why don't you go on with your life? Why do you keep whining about the same old thing again? And so traumatized people tend to get very isolated and locked up in their own uh, misery and then find the company of other people who have suffered just like they do. And then they have a, get an identity of we are sufferers and then their life still gets stuck. I think the most important thing is that we discovered that trauma changes the brain. And so a lot of people still think that trauma is something that happens to you, that is a story about the past. Um, but that's a story about the past. What really is a trauma is that your brain gets changed and you see the world differently and you live in a different body, and you diff live in a different world, where you see things differently and experience things differently from other human beings. Mm -hmm. And so the great challenge of trauma treatment is how to help people to feel fully, feel fully alive and to, um, to detoxify themselves from the impact of the trauma. That's, that's actually the big issue. Um, and there's many different methods of doing that. And in my book, I describe various things. A very important piece, aside from language, is uh, the issue of your body. Uh, that trauma is not a story that sort of lives out here as an abstract tale of what happened. Uh, 
as Darwin already pointed out back in 1872, uh, trauma is lived out in heartbreak and gut-wrenching gut experiences. So mm -hmm. it's really, you feel it over here. Ooh. And every language of the world has a world for heartbreak and gut wrench. And so when you're traumatized, you feel these awful sensations of dread and helplessness and disgust and horror in your body. And in response to that, you try to numb out your body. And the most common way of doing that is drugs and alcohol. So the, the comorbidity between trauma and drugs and alcohol is gigantic. Uh, research shows that it's almost impossible to become a drug addict without having a prior history of childhood trauma, let's say. And, and uh, it's very important to understand these ways as uh, drug addiction, some alcoholism also, as ways in which people desperately try to manage unbearable sensations. Mm -hmm. Then what we learned is that, you know, in the West, in Europe and North America, uh, we rely mainly on drugs and alcohol and yakking to get over trauma. And then what turns out is that in Asia, Africa, other parts of the world, people have found ways of calming that body down with things like Qigong and yoga. And that really reacquaint yourself with your body, helps you to calm your body down. And these things are called alternative therapies. Uh, to my mind, drugs are alternative therapies and dealing with your body is real therapy because it is about where the trouble is, is namely in the way you breathe and the way you move and the way you hold your body. And so I did the first National Institute of Health funded study on yoga and it turned out that yoga was a more effective treatment for PTSD than any medication any of us had ever studied.